Hello and good morning. Uh, uh, first things first, um, oh, welcome to, uh, uh, oh, there he is. <laughs> hey, Gunny Sawyers, can you see me? I can see you fine. Okay, right on. Okay, sir. So here we are. How about you, uh, um, uh, Sergeant Ryan? Uh, good. Microphone check. Uh, we got you. Okay. Um, so I can't really hear him, um, but I think he can hear me. Is that correct, Sergeant Ryan? He, he can. Okay. So I'm going to ask you both questions. And when you're done talking, just kind of pull your ear or something like that to let me know. And we'll just kind of go from there. So it looks like we can both see each other or we can all see each other. So that's better than, than, uh, than nothing. So uh, first things first, I um, want to apologize to everyone for the technical difficulties we were having this morning. Um, hello and uh, welcome from Maryland Business Roundtable for Education. I am Tashi Williams, Program Coordinator with Next Generation Scholars in Wicomico County. Um, and today we have a special edition of the What's Next series. Um, uh, you know, a career that's very near and dear to my heart, being a, um, a, a child of a, a retired military person. Um, so I definitely wanted to be a part of this. And today we have special guest, um, Army recruiter, um, Sergeant Ryan Hoffman. Morning. And we have retired Marine Gunnery Sergeant or Master Gunnery Sergeant James Sawyers. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, uh, before we get started, guys, uh, first things first, I want to say thank you guys so much for your service. Um, uh, and kind of just jumping right into it, um, what, and, I, and I'll start off with you, um, uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Sawyers. What was it that made you want to, uh, uh, you know, um, go go into a career of, of, of the armed forces? Well, I was uh, I was in high school during during the Vietnam era, and uh, when I graduated in uh, 1968, I, I I started going to college, and. At uh, and the college was right there in my hometown, the Institute of West Virginia, West Virginia State. And I later, after the first semester, I realized that I wasn't doing a lot with my mom's <laughs> money, and that I needed to uh, find something to do. And uh, a few friends of mine had been uh, in the service, and they come home on leave, and uh, and was was telling me how how it was. At that time, I was I I had been a, a football player all the way through high school, so I was in pretty good shape. Yes, sir. And I, I went down to uh, the recruiting office, and uh, I went to to the recruiting office. And can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I went down to the recruiting office and. I was looking to go into service and I wasn't sure. I had already taken the ASVAB test in uh, high school. So I was looking for uh, something that I wanted to, I wanted to do something. And that Marine walked out there in those dress blues and I was through. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll, take you. I'll take that. And uh, same, same question for you, Sergeant Hoffman. So mine was uh, somewhat similar. Um, so I joined right after high school, really didn't have any plan of going into the military. Uh, my mom was going to kind of use her some of her savings to pay my way through a technical institute because I did computer aided drafting in high school. So I uh, got into a little trouble my senior year and um, she said, hey, look, you need to go out and kill a deer or do whatever it is men do, but you, you need to go out and make your way. So she recommended a week or two later that I go down and talk to the recruiters. So I did. And I, I, at the time, uh, you know, there was no 9-11. 9-11 hadn't happened yet. So, um, I mean, I, I was kind of looking at benefits. How could I pay my way through college? Those kinds of things. And when I walked up to the front window, the Army had a $20,000 enlistment bonus sign and sitting out front. So I was like, okay. So I started there. And I was just pretty much hook, line, and sinker from that point. Um, so I went to basic training, went to my job training, and then my first duty assignment was Korea. And that's when 9-11 happened. I was in Korea when 9-11 happened. And it just kind of changed my perspective on why I served and why I wanted to serve and what I was a part of. And that's what kind of led me towards my 20-year career with the Army. Okay. 
It's good stuff. Good stuff. And um, uh, what? How? How long um, have you? Uh, uh, we'll start with you, uh, Sergeant um, uh, uh, Hoffman. How long have you been in, in the active military? So I joined in July of 2000. So this July will be 20 years. I've been serving on active duty. Plan on doing maybe like two or three more, and uh, I'm gonna hang it up. I'm gonna be sitting with master guns, having <laughs> coffee. And and uh, and w w what about what about you, uh, you, you yourself, uh, uh, Master Gunny? I enlisted in uh, 1969. I served until 19. 95 a year a year after my son joined the marine corps i figured it was time for me to leave <laughs> so, <laughs> so i had somebody to carry on the name and uh so i did 27 27 and a half years oh my goodness oh my goodness and uh while i still have you on right now uh master gunny um tell us about uh, a few of the places that you you were you were stationed or deployed either one okay i uh my first tour of duty that was uh that was another thing that kept me around uh, i had the privilege of serving with the navy on a uh, on the uss america i was uh, on sea duty and during that uh four-year tour i traveled the world i went i went around the world three different times oh my god and visited a lot of uh ports in the mediterranean also, I did. Uh, we did a, a one-year tour in uh, in Vietnam. So we set off the coast of Vietnam. I would fly in to Da Nang and pick up supplies and uh, and the such. And um, after that was that was my first tour of duty. And uh, that, like I said, that was what kept me around. That that sparked my interest. Uh, I when I when I got off of sea duty, I, I at the at the time I was on sea duty, I was a O three eleven as a grunt, and uh, that was uh, I I left sea duty and went to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and for six months I was in the field. Oh wow! And my uh, my enlistment was coming to an end. And I told, uh, I went in and saw the, uh, the career planner and he told me, I said, look here, I, I need to get away from Camp to June and, uh, and what, what do I need to do to change my MOS? And my, uh, my ASF scores were high enough that I could have changed them to, and gone any place I wanted to. And I, I, I picked the supply skill. Oh. And uh, logistics is, uh, is, is, is is a big field and there's a lot of opportunity in it so i i figured even if i if i didn't stick around i would get uh i would have the opportunity of learning a skill yes sir yes. and uh and that's why that's that's where i started out after i after we after cd right on right on and um uh, uh sergeant hoffman i know you're all you know always in, in your meeting with with uh, different young people um you know uh before um you know the pandemic i'm sure you were meeting with young people on the daily um tell us really briefly about why should young people young men and women consider uh, a career in the armed forces so i i'm kind of biased uh you know what started out we we te technically we have like you know seven different reasons usually that people try to look into it whether it be career occupation enhancement or you know, income or the respect or the selfless service. I've kind of, you know, I started as an income guy um, looking for, you know, funding through college and those kinds of things. But I quickly became a selfless service and like a, a and a pride type guy. Once again, 9-11 happened. It kind of changed my perspective. You know, kids that uh, enlist nowadays, they know full right and well what's going on in the world. Um, before I joined this, this wasn't a thing when I joined in 2000. So, you know, it's, it's changed the perception that people have in the military, I think a little bit and what we do. Um, I would always recommend that people serve just because it gives you a structure. It gives you some discipline. It, 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 it introduces you to the real world while you still have security and comfort of knowing that, you know, you could get fired from McDonald's much quicker than you could get fired from the army. We're very adaptive. We're very, you know, um, willing to train and willing to uh, rehabilitate, you know, soldiers that kind of have lost their way. 
And I, I get a certain sense of pride knowing that I'm doing something that like less than 1% of the American population does. So I think couple that with some of the exciting things that you can do, whether it be shooting machine guns or jumping out of helicopters or airplanes or driving tanks or flying helicopters. I mean, there's just so many opportunities in the military. I think people kind of sometimes get that perception that it's just hand grenades and machine guns and it's it, it couldn't be further from the truth so i would highly recommend that people kind of look into it just and and we never ask people to join the army we ask people to sit down with us and get information about the army it's not we're we don't need you to commit to enlisting to the service over the phone we want you to come in see what your options are weigh them against what your civilian counterpart options are and see if it makes sense to you can i can i add to that Please. I, I, spent, I, I also spent four and a half years out on recruiting duty in Detroit, Michigan, oh. and um, and I, I agree wholeheartedly with everything that he said. Uh, and another important thing to do is to make sure that you stay in contact with the parents. Keep the parents abreast of where you are through the whole process. And that way, you don't have any questions. You don't. You, you, you're, every, everything's right up front. It's, okay. uh, it's 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 very important to keep the uh, the parents and the, uh, the parents, grandparents, whoever whoever the uh, the uh, has an interest in that child and or in that uh, recruit. Okay. And and uh, before, if I, before and after they leave, before and after they leave for uh, basic training. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if I'm not mistaken, um, they do have to have either a high school diploma or uh, a GED, correct? That's Just correct. So, uh, okay. We, we run and, uh, different, different combinations. Sometimes, you know, we 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 can kind of, we're, we're flexible with education stats, but you do have to have something. We can use clock room hours. We can use semester hours from a college. We can kind of couple those with a GED to make you a high school graduate or, a, you know, a... Uh, our version, I guess you'd say, of a high school graduate. So GED is usually the, the lowest threshold that we accept. Okay. okay. Yeah, and it's important It's important to, to stay in contact for the, as, a, as a recruiter, staying in contact with the schools and having some type of affiliation with the school so that, uh, so that you have a, a point of contact in the school that you can go to and Keep abreast of where the cat, the guy is, why he's in the delayed entry program, or whatever, whatever program he is, and then it it, it just it just does a, a world of good with the schools and the parents and showing the interest in the in the uh, in the kids. Absolutely, absolutely, and also um, for for any of our guests who are watching, please in the comment section check it out. Um, we have different links uh, that you guys can click on. Um, uh, in regards to uh, um, careers in the Marines and careers in the Army, along with uh, and the last question I'm going to ask, um, I know a lot of uh, students, um, you know, they're worried, okay, am I going to have to take a test when I get in there? Am I going to take some kind of standardized test? But I heard you mention before, uh, uh, Master Gunny, so you kept mentioning the AS ASFAB, I believe it's called, correct? Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. Yeah, can you touch just really briefly on that? It's a it's a battery of, uh, of exams that uh, that touches on uh, word uh, word comprehension, uh, math. Um, cut me out. I know you've been uh, in it's, long. it's got it's got mechanical. <laughs> uh, there's a mechanical section, general mechanical. It, it it basically tests you in about ten different subsections, and it helps us place you where you would best be a fit for the military if you're strong at clerical work maybe not as strong at math we might place you into like a, a supply position or a clerical type position if you're better with mechanics then we're obviously going to have you working on you know either aircraft or tanks or weapons or weapon systems computers so basically it tells us what you're good at um you know for people that i i, I hate to cut you off master guns um but uh, for people that are interested in, you know, taking that test, we do have online versions of it now that don't necessarily count towards you taking the actual test. So we have a, a program right now called the PiCat where we can send you an electronic uh, web link 
and you can take that test in the comfort of your own home. And if you get the score that you like, you can keep it. If you don't get the score that you like, it doesn't count against you. It'll never be recorded or anything like that. Now, if you do score, um, let's say you score very well and, and you want to keep that score, we do have a verification test that's partnered with that. Um, they would have to go up to the MEPS at some point and take a 20-minute what we call verification test to ensure that there wasn't any cheating or use use of calculator those kinds of things because they're taking it in, it's not in a proctored exam so there is a portion of it that's proctored eventually it's about a 20 minute proctored exam just to make sure that their score verifies with what they got at home that's 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 a, that, that makes a big difference and when i was when i was out there we were getting up at five o'clock in the morning going through the house to pick these guys up and then get them down to the to the meth station to make sure that they were there on time. I mean, it was it, it was a, a bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's been especially helpful. And that's another thing I just really want to tap on, uh, Tashi, is that, you know, COVID-19 has shown us a lot as an army and it's shown us a lot as a recruiting force that there's a lot of things that we can do virtually nowadays. So we conduct army interviews just like this. We, we have a program where we get on and we do face-to-face -face interviews. We can test remotely we can do fingerprints remotely we we can basically do everything remotely so those that are a little intimidated by maybe coming into a recruiting station have the ability to come onto a virtual space where you can have your whole family tree there listening to what's going on and and what the recruiter has to say in those things so we've adapted pretty well and this COVID has kind of opened our eyes to what what potential we have moving into the future too I can't. I lost you, Tashi. Lost you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can do some karaoke. <laughs> How much time do we have, Tashi? Can you hear me, Master Guns? I can hear you fine. Just can't hear Tashi. Hmm. I'm going to give it like one more minute and then I'm going to kind of freestyle a little bit. Yeah. Are you back? You guys hear me? I, we can hear you, yeah. yeah. So surprise, I'm in the background here, and I'm so sorry that you guys had that connection issue with Tashi. Um, I'm doing a little multitasking, but definitely so glad to have you guys here. Um, and I know um, that we're getting towards the end of the, um, the discussion. So, um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the session. I just want to thank you guys for being here. Um, and I am, you know, really excited that we were able to get this particular session off the ground because we have so many students who are interested in this career field. Um, so for tomorrow, we are going to be introducing careers in cosmetology. Um, so please join us live on Elisa um, and have Faye um, in with us. Um, and so again, thank you guys for being here. I'm sorry if I did kind of an awkward um, closing there, <laughs> um, but um, if there are any other things that you guys want to kind of leave the students with as we wrap up the session. Well, one thing I would like to remind everybody, it's uh, it, military just like most most uh, occupations is uh, is a team sport. Uh, the uh, you, a chain is never as uh, it's, it's only as weak, uh, it's only as strong as the weakest link. And it's important to remember that you uh, you're working with a lot of guys and uh, and always pull the next guy up. If if, if you see somebody struggling in an area. Pull them up, uh, take them under your wing, uh, help them out, 
do what you can to, uh, to make them succeed. The leaders can't succeed without the, uh, without the troops succeeding. I don't know if I could put it any better than that. I, I, again, this is just, we're part of a team. Uh, we're part of a team that have a common goal, have a common interest. Um, you know, I think a lot of people think that they might be, you know, kind of misfits or maybe might not make it in the military. And, and you'd be surprised at all the different personalities and the diversity of, of the military. And I, I just, I would highly recommend whether you join or you don't join, there's no commitment by talking to a recruiter and seeing what your options are. Absolutely. Um, those are great words. And, you know, to your point that, um, you know, that diversity gives us strength in everything that we do. Um, so definitely serving the country is one way to do it. Um, but that is, I think, great that, you know, just from everything that's happening right now, the strength of having that diversity and, and considering how you can take your unique values and apply them to a career in serving the country, your country is a, a great way to do that. And so um, absolutely, you know, talking with a recruiter, learning more about what it takes, um, you know, what what internally might drive you that could be successful in that type of career um, is, is definitely um, a great approach to that. So, so thank you guys again. Um, and so I know that Tashi thanks you as well. It looks like we have them in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the live session. <laughs> um, and then we will, um, you know, we are so glad to entertain any questions that might be coming in through Facebook. Um, so please keep these questions coming and uh, we'll, we'll also address those as they come in. So thanks for having me. Thank you.